In 2022, a team of scientists investigated the genetics of the populations of Britain and Ireland and compared them to a set of 400 ancient genomes from northwestern Europe, including the aforementioned islands. The study found that the modern populations of Britain and Ireland are primarily made up of three different ancient populations. The first can be identified with native British and Irish people inhabiting the islands during the Iron Age. Because the Roman historian Tacitus referred to at least some of them as Celts and because according to linguistic research it seems highly likely that they spoke Celtic languages, it is customary to refer to them as Celts today. That being said, they differed in certain cultural aspects from their continental cousins and were thus not considered Celts by most ancient authors. Interestingly, the Irish, today seen by many as the most Celtic nation, were not considered Celtic in antiquity when the term Celt was coined. In the 1st century AD, the Romans conquered large parts of Britain, but remarkably this doesn't appear to have left a major genetic impact on the local population. Although there might be a caveat to this statement that we will get back to in a minute. More impactful than the Roman presence on the island in a genetic sense was the arrival of people with northern central European ancestry from, well, northern central Europe during the migration period. These people are collectively referred to as the Anglo-Saxons in the scientific literature, but they probably also included other groups from the region, most importantly the Jutes, but also Frisians and Franks. Migrants from southern Scandinavia might have also settled in Britain during this period, although this is difficult to say definitively as southern Scandinavians and northern central Europeans were genetically very similar during this period. All of these populations are nowadays referred to as Germanic, although during the migration period this term had already mostly fallen out of use. They did develop from populations that were referred to as Germanic during the High Imperial period, however, and they did speak Germanic languages, so their classification as Germanic is not too contentious. Due to this immigration, in parts of Eastern England, up to around three quarters of the previous Iron Age Celtic population seems to have been replaced by these newcomers. In the following centuries, they intermixed with the natives in almost every part of Britain, albeit differing degrees. Cornwall, Wales and Scotland show relatively low levels of this ancestry, and it is almost absent in the Republic of Ireland. The third genetic component that the authors of this study identified was ancestry from Iron Age France, although the researchers weren't sure when exactly this component entered Britain and Ireland. It is possible that it was carried by Gauls or Belgae who reportedly settled in Britain during the Iron Age. Admixture during the time of the Roman occupation from this region is also possible. And even the Normans might have carried substantial amounts of this admixture when they arrived in England in 1066. And there we have it. This is the genetic composition of Britain and Ireland according to the 2022 study The Anglo-Saxon Migration and the Formation of the Early English Gene Pool. What are your thoughts on this study? Let me know in the comments below and if you'd like to see more of these types of videos. They are more difficult to make than it seems and uh, that's especially true if you're working and studying at the full time at the same time. Anyway, I appreciate you watching and hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one. Bye bye.